hi i'm abhilash and welcome to my channel so today's video is on making continuous midi controller and if you do not want to watch the complete video you can use the timestamp given in the description box and you can directly jump to the specific uh, topic that you want to understand okay so now let's begin with the demonstration of the keyboard Okay, so as you might have noticed using this instrument you can not only play continuous notes but you will also be able to control the amplitude by uh, depending on how hard you press on the board so harder you press the louder the noise will be so that's how you can give frequency or amplitude modulation to your sound okay so now let's uh, start discussing that why do you need such kind of instrument at all so uh, from my limited knowledge of uh, Indian classical music, I can say that it is very much important to uh, have such a continuous notes to play various kind of expression that are a very much integral part of Indian classical music. So on keyboard, if you, for example, if you take C and C sharp, so either you can play frequency associated to C or C sharp. But if you want to play any frequency in between that, it is not possible so uh, using this instrument we can do that however if you go from go for, for some high end uh, keyboard they give some pitch bend wheel uh, so using this wheel you can actually play some in between notes also but uh, this is not very convenient way and it is also very difficult to play some accurate notes During search of such instrument, I came across a few instrument that can actually uh, play such kind of music and the best of them uh, I can say is Haken Continuum Board. So this is very capable instrument and it was also appreciated by uh, many renowned artists as well. So yes, uh, this keyboard has some very powerful and capable hardware and it has some inbuilt uh, sound engine as well which is called Eisen Vector. Uh, if I remember correctly and it it gives some really rich and uh, very pleasing sound uh, but such a feature also comes with a huge cost so typically uh, such instrument uh, this instrument cost somewhere around maybe two to four lakhs depend on what version you choose so it is surely not for a typical hobbyist but i think it is more for a professional person who can actually afford uh, such instrument uh, next instrument is a rolly seaboard so this instrument can also play continuous notes and apart from that it can also control timber and all these things <laughs> from such instrument i also tried to previously make uh, one musical instrument that can play continuous notes and if you want to know more about it a uh, link is there in description so uh, here is a short demo
of it so yes this was a arduino nano based instrument and it was it made use of uh, arduino inbuilt tone library so this tone library is not very good approach to create some music because it use square wave and that sounds not at all good if you if you are really concerned about uh, sound quality so in my uh, upcoming build or whatever build i am going to present now here instead of uh, creating sound on board i try to uh, simply generate midi message uh, that i can fit to a sound synthesizer a software and um, i can then i can create any good quality of sound as per uh, my requirement so in hardware section we have basically two parts to work upon so one is sensing part in which we have to detect or measure accurately that where user has touched and apart from that we also have to measure how hard uh, user has pressed any key and based on that we can create our signals so this is a kind of difficult part uh, as we have to uh, do all these thing very precisely and second part is to process this data and um, prepare mini message and transmit it to synthesizer so this is relatively easy part because i am directly using arduino mega as microcontroller and there are some readily available library that i can work upon with here i am using arduino only because i am very much comfortable with it there may be some another microcontroller which are uh, more suitable for this purpose purpose but uh, arduino also works If you check about Hacking Pentium board, uh, they basically make use of Hall effect sensing. It is very accurate and precise sensing, and they talks about sensing with range of few microns. So yes, it is highly accurate uh, system. If you want more information, you can just uh, search of it on YouTube. Uh, so there are multiple lectures available by a creator of this instrument himself. Uh, for our purpose it might not be very useful because it will make our system very complex and we have to prepare a complete array of these sensors so yes it is a bit difficult to uh, work with so what i have choose choose to work is with uh, uh, capacitive sensing because if we use capacitive sensing we don't have to pre um, make any extra sensors we can simply use some metallic plates or conductive plates as our sensors and there are also some libraries that are readily available uh, to fulfill our purpose if you are not aware with capacitive sensing uh, here is a key preview of it so typically uh, most of the smartphone smartphones works on this technology only so in our case there will be a metallic plate which is connected to arduino via a big value of resistors say 500 kilo ohm or maybe 1 or 2 mega ohm depending on the application and si also size of the plate and then we will charge it to 5 volt uh, simply by uh, connecting it to our 5 volt pin and then we will uh, discharge it using our resistor and we will see how much time it takes to get discharged from 5 volt to say 0 volt or whatever threshold is there in the library and the time it takes to discharge from um, one value to another value it will represent the capacitance as our rest uh, this is not the value of capacitance but it is a representative value so this we can directly use as our uh, input for sensing sensing okay so next part we have to define is the dimension of all of these plates so uh, here we the smaller the dimension of each of this plate is the better positioning accuracy we can get but again the smaller the size of plate we have to use we have to use so many number of plate and it will make our wiring um, complex as well as our data processing also difficult so that's why we have to get some optimum size of plate so that we can uh, not only get the accurate uh, positioning but also we can manage all of these things by using minimum number of plate to see uh, how much air area required what i try to do i just clean the screen of my phone or say you can say any glass and i lightly touched it and there is some stains on the screen that you can see you might not be able to see it on camera but you can uh, try to do it by yourself and see there will be some stain on the glass and if you measure the size of it it is somewhere around 8 to 9 mm of width so this is the width uh, our finger will be touching to this board so at every instance of time 
our finger must be in touch with at least two plates so that we can have some accurate output so that's why i have choose to have a 6 mm of uh, plate width and uh, this worked very well for my application and i am always ensure that at any instance of time my finger will be in touch with if not if not three then at least two number of plate and then i can try to uh, interpolate that where exactly uh, is the touch position so that's how we can uh, set the uh, size of the uh, plate and i think 6 mm works well the smaller you go uh, it will be even get better but you have to modify the code accordingly so yes that was the fir first part of having these plates so now we also have to connect the electronics that is required for capacitive sensing so here in my case i tried to cover two octaves so it will be in total 24 keys and each key uh, is covered by two number of plate so in total we have to use 48 number of plate so we do not have any other option than using arduino mega okay so next part is to see uh, electrical connections so if you see any of the plate it need to be directly connected to one pin of arduino and it need to connect it with another pin of arduino via a register but here as we have around 48 number of plates we cannot spare all 96 uh, pins because we don't have so many so what we will do we will keep one pin common and use another sensing pin separately so if you see in this case okay so if you can see here we have so many uh, uh, registers that are connected so each of this register this pin is direct directly goes to uh, our sensing plate and upper part is on common line and which is directly connected to one common pin which is nothing but pin number 13 and after and resting part is connected to uh, separate pins of arduino that we can map on our code so that's how uh, we can uh, try to optimize the number of uh, pin uh, required so yes i think that's all about the hardware because it as you can see uh, it is very straightforward but it might be a bit cumbersome to have so many connections and so many components on a single board okay so now uh, let's begin with the software part so here i am writing everything in arduino uh, ide only because it is the easiest way uh, i know okay so now let's begin so initially we first we have to uh, include this capacity sensor library and if you go through documentation of it first we have to declare all these um, sensor all these plates as a sensor so i will directly jump to this part and i will explain all this variable whenever it com comes into picture so here if you can see all this p1 p2 p3 up to p48 are the plates so it is plate number one plate number two plate number three and so on so if you can see p1 it is directly connected to a common pin number 13 and uh, it is connected to a pin number 12 via register and similar uh, for p2 and all other pins it is directly connected to a common pin uh, which is pin number 13 and it is connected to uh, some uh, dedicated pin via a register so that's how we will declare all this um, pin uh, all this plate as a sensor capacitive sensor and that we will use uh, whenever it required so now we will directly jump to a uh, loop so yes in setup we are just declaring uh, we are just starting serial communication so that we can see what's going on okay so first uh, function is raw capture so in this case we will scan the complete array of our plate or sensor and we'll try to get some raw data so here we have a uh, here we have a array of our sensor data which is which are we having size of around 48 and for plate number one we will uh, do uh, the sensing and store it uh, accordingly and here if you see resolution so based what i understand from the documentation of uh, this capacitive sensor library is that if you set this resolution to one it will do sensing once and it will uh, give it as output but for example if you set resolution value to 10 then it will do uh, it will take reading 10 times and give the commutative answer or maybe you can say sum of all those 
10 reading as output so higher the resolution the better the accuracy you will get but again uh, it will take more time uh, for sensing so yes it is kind of trade-off between speed and accuracy that you have to uh, work with based on uh, your app uh, setup in my case i found it worked well uh, for resolution of somewhere around uh, 15 uh, to 17 or something around only okay so once we uh, run uh, run this part this row capture uh, then we will have uh, all this data uh, updated in our uh, array and now we can uh, proceed for the uh, data process but before that I will like to uh, show you that how this data actually looks so instead of uh, printing all this um, 48 value I am just printing from 1 to 20 so that we can have some uh, rough understanding that how it looks so here you can see this is the raw data for first 20 plates we are getting so now let me touch any of this plate and see uh, what difference it makes so here you can see these values are varying based on where i touch and how also depend on how hard i press so if i just do some smooth touch versus a very uh, intense touch you can see so if i move this value will also try to move and we can using this data we can cal actually calculate that where exactly we are touching so yeah that's how uh, this raw data looks and now we have to process this data into some useful output okay uh, now let's see uh, how we can process the data and make some usable output out of it so first let's let's enable this uh, function yeah it is already enabled so now we'll see how this uh, data process function works okay so first what it will do it is to create uh, some sort of uh, uh, maximum detect initially it will detect the maximum point out of all this uh, plate and then it will proceed for further calculation so here it will just scan all the plates and see what is the maximum uh, very simple and straightforward okay so now this is the function uh, that will keep updated last 30 values of key pressure and all these things uh, and what all these functions are that you will see in upcoming lines of code okay so once you detect uh, the key with maximum uh, capacitance or maximum pressure where user has uh, pressed then we have to interpolate exact location of touch so for that we have to not only see the plate what we have touched but also one plate before it and one plate after it so if you remember our in our previous section uh, i explained that we always have to touch at least uh, two or uh, in best case uh, three plates so that we can have some accurate output so this line of code will try to interpolate your touch based on the plate with maximum value of capacitance and also one plate before that and one plate after that and using this three data it will try to accurately pinpoint the uh, location of touch that if you have touch at exactly center or slight slightly left or slightly right all these thing will be taken care by uh, this function and then this pressure uh, variable that will keep the value of maximum um, touch uh, with it and yes all these things will be keep updated in our array so at any instance of time we will be having last 30 value of uh, keys uh, as well as pressure that we can uh, make use of in uh, for smoothing or maybe any other purposes okay so now next part yes so once we have detected the accurate position of our finger as well as the pressure now we have to uh, transmit it to computer so there are actually three conditions that we are defining so the first condition okay and before that one thing i missed to mention is that we will enter in these three condition only if we uh, touch the keyboard otherwise it won't enter uh, actually there isn't any point of entering this condition without touching so what i have defined if the maximum value is greater than 17 then only uh, it will get into this condition and play any sound and if it is less than 17 it won't touch so this value uh, i checked by some trial and error only and i uh, noticed that if i touch the key the value typically exit somewhere around 20 or 22 or something so that's how i have done some trial and error and set this value so that uh, i can always ensure that 
it will make sound only if i touch uh, else it won't uh, make any um, miscommunication okay so now uh, again get back to our three conditions so first condition that when we touch any key like uh, initially we didn't have any we haven't touched any keys but uh, after we touch this will be the first condition another condition will leave the key so and third condition will be what we do while we are uh, touching these uh, keys like if we are increasing and decreasing the pressure or we are just giving some bends by sliding our finger so these are three conditions that we will work with and one more thing that i would like to point out that here uh, it won't support uh, multiple touches because yes it will detect but we have to code accordingly and this current software will only take care of one touch and if you try to uh, do multiple touch it will only consider the touch with the maximum amplitude so yes in uh, upcoming versions i will also try to uh, improve on that okay so again uh, if we see the first condition when we touch uh, any key uh, it will not only uh, start uh, that note but it will also uh, record this band value so it doesn't matter where you touch on key uh, if you touch on center or maybe slightly left or slightly right it will start with pure note only otherwise it will be very difficult to get some uh, pure note if we give uh, assign the absolute values so here we are playing with relative values only so irrespective of where you touch on the key uh, it will start with pure note only and uh, later it may be a uh, bend here and there okay so uh, that's how this function works and next function is uh, for turning of the key which is actually very straightforward and i don't think uh, i need to explain more on it and third is what we do while uh, we are touching the key so here it is a bit tricky because we have to do lots of uh, smoothing of this data and all and during this condition it will continuously scanning uh, all these plates and try to see what we are doing and all our band and everything it will try to transmit to our uh, computer and see uh, and play notes accordingly so here uh, we are sending this pitch band message as well as we are sending some continuous control uh, for uh, amplitude control and here there is also one function which we are calling exponential smooth so this function we are using uh, to just smooth out uh, all this pressure value as well as uh, this slide value without that uh, there will be lots of chitter and uh, noise in this data and obviously adding this uh, smooth can will also add some delay or lag in this response but still it is very much required to have uh, such a facility okay so uh, in all these three conditions you can see one more function which is called midi message and here uh, these are the message it will send and if you want to know more on how this midi message work i will highly recommend you to go through this instructable which i have uh, referred while learning on this midi communication so link will be there in description that you can you may refer if you want okay so now i think we are done with uh, software part also in next part i will try to explain how we can generate uh, some proper sound okay so now our keyboard is ready to transmit a midi message based on uh, based on how we uh, operate it but now we have to also create some sound out of it so for that we need uh, two three softwares uh, to do the job so first we will be requiring a sound synthesizer so in my case i will be using fl studio because i found it a bit convenient and also i got some uh, plugins that was giving a sound as per my expectation uh, next software we need is to have some bridge in between our serial communication uh, to our fl studio because fl studio takes uh, data as a usb uh, input or usb uh, data so there is also one software that will be converting our whatever data we are receiving uh, to as a, a usb output and we need one more software to take data from our serial communication and convert it to give our software which can further convert it to usb so yes it is a kind of three stage process and it will it also adds good amount of delay but yeah that's how uh, uh, it works so first let's start this fl studio let me see if recording is on or not 
okay so let's start the FL studio and continue forward okay so in FL studio I found a plugin called Sakura and sound of it I found very pleasing and uh, perfectly fit for my uh, application and next uh, plugin we want is uh, this loop MIDI so I think it is already running so if you go to setting of uh, FL studio in MIDI setting uh, you will find this loop MIDI port so now our uh, this software or this loop MIDI plugin will transmit data to FL studio but where this loop MIDI uh, software will get, get data from so for that we need one more software which is called hairless MIDI yeah so this will take data from our serial port and send it to our loop MIDI port yeah so now our circle is com completed first our Arduino will transmit data to hairless MIDI via serial port and then this software will send it data uh, to MIDI port uh, this loop MIDI thing and this will transmit data to our FL studio uh, and all, you have to also set up this in FL studio so that it can work well yeah so now I think everything is ready and once you touch your keyboard you should be able to see lots of thing happening over here yeah so let me touch any random key and uh, show you what happens okay so let me touch some key yeah okay so as you can see it is producing some sound based on where we touch but now it is not over yet here we have to also specify the band and set the uh, amplitude modulation so by default if you go to setting of FL studio it will be having a pitch band range of only 2 but in our code we have set it to 16 so it can go either at plus 8 notes of uh, from where you started or at negative 8 so let me set it to 16 yeah and we also have to uh, set the module uh, this volume value uh, to our controller so here you have to set 2 5 3 I don't know why it this work but I just uh, tried and it worked so maybe if uh, if you are already aware of this you can give more comment on it yeah it work with 253 and I am also setting it as inverted uh, log scale and also I will turn on the smoothing ok now it should be perfectly functional ok so as you can see once I touch the key it will produce some sound if I press hard volume will increase and I can also bend the note yeah so it is it sounds good and we can control not only amplitude but also bend the notes okay so uh, thanks for watching the video uh, and I hope that you might found this uh, overall tutorial uh, useful and if you have any comment or session uh, do let me know in my future videos I will also try to uh, make some uh, improved version of it in which I will try to make some onboard uh, sound synthesizer using some powerful uh, microcontrollers and instead of uh, pasting all this uh, strip together I will try to make a PCB in which we can etch all this thing and we can simply connect plug and play uh, so this will be uh, my upcoming project if you really found this interest interesting or useful uh, consider subscribing subscribing the channel and again thanks